Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to continue our look at OS2 3.0 Connect, and I'm gonna show you how I configured it. Now, as you can see, I do have it configured here. This is running on my Gateway 486 DX266, but for convenience, I'm actually going to show you how I set this up in a virtual machine, complete with procedure. So let's get right to it. OS2 Warp. 3.0 Connect, Blue Spine, and a Virtual Machine. Here we go. First of all, the directions you see on the right-hand side of your screen are available in my Git repository. You can see the contents here. I will also provide a link at the bottom of this video so that you can find this with ease if you'd like to follow along. Please do. All right. Let's talk about the different items to locate for this installation. First of all, we're going to want Oracle VM VirtualBox. Ideally, we would use version 5.1.38, but that's not going to install in Windows 10. So we'll probably go with 6.0.18. The reason we would want 5.1.38 is because it would have sound support, whereas sound changed in later versions of VirtualBox and doesn't quite work the way it used to. So to find this version of VirtualBox, we can go to the VirtualBox webpage, go to the download section, we can scroll down to the VirtualBox older builds. In this case, we'll go to the 6.0 series. And here we can find 6.0.18. There you have it. We're also going to be using WinImage today for purposes of making a driver CD for our network card. So we can download that via winimage.com download. Also going to need to find your IBM OS2 Warp 3.0 Connect Blue Spine installation CD. And finally, you will also need to find the AMD PCNet drivers for VirtualBox. And they can be found at this link here from WinWorld PC. Just download this etherte1.zip file, and we will later take that and create a floppy disk out of it for purposes of putting into the virtual machine. So those are your items to locate. As far as installations are concerned, you will need to install Oracle VM VirtualBox as well as WinImage. I won't be demonstrating that today since I have previously installed them. Next up, we're going to go ahead and create and configure a virtual machine. To do that, I'm going to launch VirtualBox. I'm going to click the new button and we'll create a machine called OS2. Next. Going to change the memory to 32 megabytes. That's plenty for OS 2.3. Next, we'll create a virtual hard disk. I'm going to make it a VMDK. It really doesn't matter because we're not going to be doing much with this image, but it's best to do that in case you want to inject some files into it later. Next, we'll say dynamically allocated is to save space on disk. Next, going to make it 500 megabytes and we'll click create. Excellent. So now we want to go ahead and configure the network aspects of the virtual machine. I'm going to click settings, go to network, change the attached to to be a bridged adapter and set it to my wireless card. You can choose whatever card you have. It's fine, wireless or wired. From there, we can click okay. All right. The next thing we need to do is create a driver's disk for our ethernet card. To do that, we're going to use WinImage. I'll go ahead and launch that. I'm going to say File, New, and create a 1.44 megabyte disk. I'm now going to navigate to where I downloaded that etherte1.zip file. Right click on it and say, Uni extract the subfolder, or you can use your unzip program, whatever you have is fine. I now have a unzipped folder and go back into an image, say File, or say image, inject a folder, go to that location, to the top level directory and say, okay, yes. And now we have it. All of those files for that driver's disk are injected in to this image. We can now say file, save, change the type to IMA. We'll call this PCNet and save it on the desktop. Perfect. From there, I can close one image and we're ready to start the virtual machine. Now, 
what we need to do when we start the virtual machine is insert the ISO disk into the virtual CD-ROM drive and also a floppy disk into the floppy drive. There's a couple of ways we can do it. I can click settings and do it before we actually start the machine or you can start the machine and do it. Either way is fine. So we'll go to settings, storage, go to this floppy controller here, choose a virtual floppy disk file. We'll go to the desktop. I'm going to put disk zero in. And then for the CD-ROM, we can do something similar by clicking on this icon, going here, choose an optical file, and choose the installation ISO. Great. From there, we can hit the start button on the virtual machine. And I'll increase this in size a little bit so you can see it. It's already ready for us to put disk one in. We'll go ahead and do that. Installation continues. I'll make it even bigger. When greeted with the welcome screen, press enter. Choose two for an advanced installation. Choose one to accept the predefined installation partition. And when you get this screen, what we need to do is actually take the disk out of the drive and put in the original first disk, disk zero, and then press the enter key. Once again, we need to put disk one in the drive and then press enter. Once again, we see the welcome screen, press enter. Two for advanced installation. You can just use your arrow key and then enter. One to accept the drive. Two to go with a FAT system. That just makes things easier if you want to inject files into the image later. Enter. Files will load. At this point, we can go ahead and remove the disk from the floppy drive and press enter. Okay, so this is a bit of an important step. For the CD-ROM drive, we actually need to change it to no CD-ROM drive. And to do that, we can scroll down on this list and choose non-listed IDE CD-ROM, and then uncheck this other option. If we don't do that, we're going to have problems when we get to step two of the installation later. All right, another thing we can do here is if you're using the older VirtualBox 5 series, you can have support for sound. Unfortunately, like I noted, version six does not seem to support it well. I'll go ahead and add a sound card even though we won't be able to do anything with it. But at least we have it. Excellent. From there, we can click OK to continue the installation. For printers, I'm gonna choose do not install default printer and click OK. And we're going to install the works here, so we'll just say install for all of these items. Also, we'll allow the addition of existing programs to the desktop, so we'll say OK there. We do want to install networking support. I want to install the IBM Peer for OS2 and IBM TCP IP for OS2 3.0, so we're going to check both of those boxes. And finally, we get to the point where we get to use that driver's CD or disk. So I'm going to put the driver's disk, PCNet.IMA, into the floppy drive. Should be on my desktop. There it is. Then we're going to say other adapter and say OK. There it is. Choose Ethernet. This is not token ring. <laughs> Click OK. Perfect. Now we can go to this OS2 peer tab and put in a workstation name. Any workstation name is fine. And also choose NetBIOS over TCP IP. That will allow for file sharing. And then we can go to the TCP IP tab. Once again, put in a host name. I don't know why these are disconnected. Put in an IP address, a static address not in use on your network, and put in a router address. Excellent. From here, I'm gonna click install and we're gonna get a nasty gram. It's going to say you did not configure your adapter. That's fine. Click OK. 
and then click OK again. There is nothing to configure. And then click Install. Excellent. At this point, installation is completed and we can click OK. Welcome to OS2 3.0 Connect. One of the first things that we're going to be greeted with here is the need to create a default username and password. However, there is a built-in guest password, so that's not necessary. So when presented with this dialog, we can just click Cancel and then OK. Perfect. Let's catch up with where we are on the directions. <laughs> As you can see, I really didn't track along here. So let's see where we are. We're pretty far down here. Oh, I think we actually made it all the way through. So that's our installation portion of OS2. Next, we'll talk about configuration. So moving on to configure the OS2 installation, we'll actually find there's not that much to do. Let's get on it. First of all, one thing that just annoys me, so we're going to take care of it, is you see two copies of this MPTS on the desktop. I'm going to pick one and right-click on it and say delete. And then we'll say delete. And then yes, it's just because it annoys me. Another thing you may want to delete is this IBM Internet Connection for OS2. It's actually more geared towards a dial-up modem, which we don't have. So I'm just going to delete that as well. Not required, but we'll get rid of it. So yes to all, yes to all, and it's gone. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and configure DNS. And in doing that, we also are going to change some of the route settings. So I'm going to go to OS2 system, and I'm going to look for TCP IP. And I'm going to go to TCP IP configuration. And we're going to go to host names, over here to name server addresses, and click add. And I'm going to add my DNS server, which happens to be my router. Excellent. One other thing I'm going to do, and this is not necessarily required. I had trouble on real hardware with this, not in a virtual machine. But I'm going to go to the routing tab and delete all the routes that are not the default route. Great. From there, we're all set. We can come and double click on this little notebook looking thing. Click Save. Click OK. Click No for configuring SendMail. Yes for updating ConfigSys. And done. With that, we're all set to reboot. So to do that, we can go shut down. Click OK. And when we see this screen, we're good to do host command R. Perfect. Our configuration should now be complete. Let's have a look at our directions. Next up, we're going to go ahead and actually test the installation. And first, we're going to test TCP IP. To do that, I'm just going to launch a command window down here and tell net to my Raspberry Pi. That seems to be working pretty well. Excellent. We could also FTP to it if we wanted to. Also looking good. Let's go ahead and share a drive or access a share drive rather. To do that, we can do a net use and a drive letter. I'm just going to map to my Raspberry Pi. Need to put in a user ID of guest when prompted. And that was successful. So now we can go to Drive X and do a DIR and see the files on our network share. Final thing that I'm going to demonstrate testing for, though it's not going to work, is audio. To do that, we can go back to the desktop, find the multimedia group, come over to the sound bytes, and in theory, we should be able to pick a file and play it. Though so you can see that nothing happens. All right, well, that's pretty much what I had for you today. As you can see, as compared to previous weeks, configuring OS2 3.0 was really a breeze. I think at this point, IBM started to bring things together a little bit better. 
and things were definitely a lot more integrated than they were in the past. So definitely this was the beginning of that. It'll be really interesting as we explore OS2.4 next to see what that looks like. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content to come. Ring that notification bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs down. Uh, but that's pretty much it for now. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.